Okay, so yes, we've got the three characteristics. It says this study was double blind. So we know that the households don't know because the packages, the products were identified identically. Um, they just, one had the product, one did not have a product. Uh, let me explain a little bit how we can be evaluator blind. Um, what happens is there's always kind of like a lead researcher in these studies and so they know they have like a big spreadsheet they know which households got the ingredients which households did not get the ingredient so they know but the evaluators that go in to collect the data they don't know either uh, they just report it give the results back and then the lead researcher will um, draw the conclusions so that's kind of how usually evaluative line is achieved um, Let's look at the third question that asks about the working variables. It says, suppose instead of assigning the treatments at random, they simply compare the frequency of infectious disease symptoms over a year in households that use antibacterial products and those that do not. What are some lurking variables that we run into there? The type of people. Okay, so yes, type of people. Ken called me over while you were talking about this, and he said, well, pretty much any time people are involved, can't that typically be a lurking variable? And, and he's right. Usually it is, especially when you're talking about something like this. You're talking about the frequency of sickness showing up in households that use antibacterial products and in households that don't. So it, it's not always necessarily an antibacterial product. Just think, people that use antibacterial products typically are going to be cleaner and healthier in general as opposed to those that do not. So, um, yeah, type of people is typically a lurking variable when uh, people like, when, when the experiment is not completely controlled, it's not in a controlled environment, their, their lifestyle, we'll put that type of people, lifestyle, can usually always be a lurking variable. Okay, now this last one I really like um, because I teach AP, it's really interesting. But this is one, uh, I think this is a very good example of why I think it's good that we're teaching y'all this. Because, I mean, y'all are bombarded with statistics all the time. You, you are always hearing about studies about this, studies about that. There's always something about, well, this causes cancer, or this doesn't cause cancer, or this prevents cancer, or, I mean, there are all sorts of studies out there, and it's really important for you to know whether those studies are valid or not. Uh, because unfortunately, there are people out there that are super ethical, and they will, uh, they will design experiments and treatments and things like that, and essentially, they don't necessarily manipulate it, but in a way that they set it up, it's almost guaranteed to give the results that they're trying to prove. So, you know, not having that random assignment, not having a uh, control group, or not having sufficient number of subjects, you're kind of making it give the results that you want it to, and this is a good example of that. There was an article on WashingtonPost.com that had to do with AP versus IB, a win for students, and so it says that even students who fail AP exams in high school are twice as likely to graduate from college in five years as students who never try AP. And it followed 78,079 students in Texas. So what is the treatment here? Taking AP, okay, taking AP. What's the response variable? Graduating in less than five years. <clears throat> graduating college, sorry, not just high school, graduating college in five years or less. Okay, does this sound like you came from a well designed experiment? Maybe. Let's go through our conditions. Uh, sufficient number. <coughs> Yeah, 78,079 students, that's a lot, that's sufficient. Uh, do we have a controller or comparison group? Yeah, we got kids that didn't take AP, right? Do we have, <coughs> excuse me, do we have random assignment? No, they're all 
taking AP. So there's a big fat working variable because you can't ethically say, all right, you're taking an AP course, you're not. You're taking an AP course, you're not. You're taking an AP course, you're not. You can't do that. So you are limited to students that choose to take AP courses. So wouldn't you think that the students that are motivated to take AP courses in high school are probably going to be more motivated in college and they're going to get it done in five years or less? It kind of makes sense. So this sounds great. It sounds like a wonderful study. Um, you know, we're talking about AP and students being successful in college, but it's the way that it's designed. And is there a way to fix that? Could we, part four says, can you design an experiment that shows that you're more likely to graduate from college in five years? Could we fix this problem? You really can't. I mean, you really can't, unless you just do the unethical thing and sign this kid up for AP and this kid is not allowed to take any AP classes, you can't fix that problem of random assignment. Um, so, you can run an experiment. You can run an experiment on just about anything, but that doesn't, not, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that your results are going to be valid. So, no, I do not think that we can run an experiment to test this hypothesis. Okay, so let's just take a second. Um, okay, so what are the treatments there in this teacher's experiments? The different versions of the exam. Easier questions first, more difficult problems first. What is the response variable? The scores. Okay, so treatments are the uh, difficulty of questions at the beginning. Beginning of the test. And then the scores are the response variable. Okay, do we have our three characteristics of a well designed study? No. no, which one are we missing? Random. Okay, we're missing random assignments. And an argument could also be made for um, the sufficient number of subjects. Two classes worth, there's only 15 kids per class not giving yourself a whole lot of data. So not necessarily missing it, but an argument could be made for missing this. The big thing is the random assignment. Okay, is it subject blocked? Yes, it is subject blocked, or it should be. It didn't tell us that it was, but it makes sense that it would be subject blocked. The teacher probably doesn't need to tell these students, hey, you all have the easier questions first. You're, you're kind of, you're setting your kids up when you when you tell them what's going on uh, is it evaluative line no okay so yes it is subject line no it is not evaluative line all right give me some lurking variables huh there's no control group well there's a comparison we, we've got the you either have to have a control or a comparison so this, this is a comparison because we've got two different versions of the test all right What's the lurking variable? What kind of test it is? Okay, that could be a lurking variable. Um, some kids are just better at certain subjects than others. Okay, so subject or test. What were you going to say, Carlos? Carlos, did you have Okay. What else? What else can you think of? Time of day, that's a good one. How are y'all first period versus second period? Uh, y'all wide open all the time like you are in here? Yeah? Some people are. I'm a morning person. I, you know, I'm a morning person. It doesn't matter if I take my chest at 8 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Just don't give me one at 8 o'clock at night. I'm not, not going to say Um, No, not really. I mean, I can stay up. I just don't like to. My brain starts shutting down at like 8 o'clock. I'm done with it. I watch TV and I go to bed. That's it. Huh? I do. 
So, I mean, for me personally, I teach academic math three first period, and I teach honors math three third period. So we don't know what the difference between his first and second year are. Now, hopefully, they're the same, uh, same class, but. This one, I think, has, has several working variables that I think could contribute. So, what could the teacher do to improve the assignment? Okay, throw them out the random kids. All right, between the two classes, give every other kid the easy one first, and every other kid gets the hard one first in first and second period. That would fix your random assignments. Okay? Could do that. You could give both tests to both classes. That would work. Probably might end up with a little bit of testing fatigue, but that does help with the random assignment. Um, what else? Can anybody think of? I can think of another thing. Anybody else think of something else? Huh? Add more kids. Add more kids. He could do all of his classes if he teaches all the same sections, or if he doesn't. Get another teacher involved. Um, if he's got a first and a fourth, see if the fourth period kids do any different. Um, so several things that you can do there. Most of it has to do with more or the randomness. 